right, what's up Modern Bay Tribe? Travis here with the Modern Bay Company. As you guys know, we do Subaru conversions in vintage Volkswagen bay window buses. It's totally our thing. Um, so today I'm coming to you with a quick video. Uh, I always say quick and then it ends up being like 20 minutes long. So we'll see what happens. But this video is about how to convert your automatic bay window bus to a manual bay window bus. Um, so if your automatic transmission, if you have an early automatic, those are, nobody really works on them anymore. Uh, if they fail, you'll maybe need to find a later model automatic, maybe from a van again, uh, retrofit that in. It has its own problems doing that. Um, so, so that's one you know, use case. Or if you just prefer a manual, if you have an automatic and you just want the feel, uh, the driving experience of having a manual, um, that's another reason why you might want to convert from automatic to manual. Um, or, I don't know, any other reasons, Jess? I think that's... No, nope. just like driving manuals. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So in our case, our client um, wanted to ditch the automatic, go with the manual. We said, awesome, let's do it. Um, the reason we're able to do this is because we've got kind of a, a parts hoard that we draw from, uh, from vehicles that we've parted out. We've also got numerous, we've got a lot of buses <laughs> sitting around um, and, and over in storage as well. So the stuff that we did not have on hand here in the shop um, like the, you will show it to you in a minute, the clutch cable tube, for example, that we're actually able to pull from a different bus that's going from manual to automatic, kind of a, a perfect scenario for us here. So, um, so yeah, without further ado, I'm going to give you an overview of everything you would need to do this. And then we're just going to dive in and go for it. Uh, some of this video is going to be a little shaky, a little not so great because we'll be like under the bus doing this sort of thing, um, T-Rex style as we normally do when we're under the bus. Um, but yeah, let's just dive in here. Okay, so first things first, here's the transmission. This one is a 002. Um, this conversion would apply if you wanted to put an 091 in uh, as well. Either way, um, works fine. There's a subtle difference, which I'll show you in a minute with which those got, with those guys in the front. But uh, for the most part, we're totally good. So this is our beautiful uh, re-geared, rebuilt transmission, ready for action. Um, and this is where basically what we're doing on the bus with that stuff over there um, ends right here. Uh, with the clutch cable actuating this guy. So uh, that's what that looks like. And then we're gonna jump over here to the overview of all the parts you would need to do this. So obviously we're on the shop floor, uh, not the cleanest shop floor, but hey, uh, it is it is swept, so there's that. So starting at one end, uh, we have the long rod. Pulled this from a parts bus uh, a long, long time ago. So we have that guy. Um, these have three bushings in the middle. Um, it's not a bad idea to replace those. Although some of these aftermarket, the ones that are aftermarket uh, are terrible. So you might not want to replace them uh, because they can break. Uh, so if yours are in good shape, grease them up. Uh, they'll likely be good to go for a long, long time. I usually don't say that unless I have specific experience with stuff. And in this case, uh, that's my experience. So uh, we're going to go with new uh, cage and new um, coupler right here. We've got, of course, new Bowden tube. Shout out to Wolfsburg West. Uh, for that guy, this clutch cable tube we pulled from the other bus, like I mentioned. Um, and then, you know, we just cleaned it up, painted it uh, to put it in. But it's got the exact uh, kind of factory uh, shape and everything. Um, I'm actually, we actually measured this for the specs so that if we want to remake them, we can instead of pulling them from another bus. But this isn't a common thing, so we're not planning on doing that anytime soon. But an essential piece for sure. Uh, the end of the clutch cable, we got the wing nut. The front of the clutch cable uh, going on that guy, uh, we've got a little clip for the clutch cable itself, which you'll need. Those are readily available. Uh, get the ones that are 3,215 millimeters long. If you want to look at this one, there's a part number. Um, that's what you need. Now, you'll see over here that I've got two front um, shifter shafts. So this one was a shorter one. But if you do this conversion with the Subaru motor, uh, the way things are spaced, uh, your shifter will hit the ashtray if you have the shorter one. So I'm not gonna use the shorter one. I'm gonna use the one that at one point I cut, extended and welded and powder coated and everything. So, um, but just wanted to show you guys that difference just in case you get to that point and you realize, oh man, I should have done that differently. So that's that. Uh, we got our uh, little shifter plate um, and then uh, under the floor, actually, on the automatic buses, there's no integrated nuts. So we're going to weld two nuts to the underside of the floor, uh, which it won't go this direction, but they'll be under here so that our shifter itself can bolt down 
We'll clean this up, re-grease it, of course, uh, before we install it, but you'll need this from a donor bus if you don't have one, um, if you're converting. Uh, at the front of this uh, shifter shaft, um, you'll need one of these, which is a bushing. Shout out again, Wolfsburg West. Um, sell these, and that goes basically in there and on the bus. You'll need a clutch pedal. It's a little bit different than the brake pedal because it hooks off to the side that direction as opposed to um, the brake pedal, which is just in the middle. So um, that is almost everything. Last thing, this guy, which bolts to the frame um, and the clutch pedal connects to it, which pulls um, your clutch cable. So again, that is the overview here of everything needed um, to do the conversion. So let's dive in. All right, so we are getting ready to install the clutch cable tube. And this is actually on every bus, usually a manual bus, it's already folded down and there's the tube through it. But even on the automatics, it's on there, but just folded against the torsion tube. So that's kind of neat, but we can't actually feed this thing all the way through that and navigate it where it needs to go up through here. So we're gonna leave this up for now, but later we'll probably cut it, fold it down, and then weld our tube back to it um, or create some other kind of solution for that. But kind of neat that it just has a provision for it. Okay, so check this out. So this is El Dorito right here. Um, and the clutch cable tube goes through right there, which is just down, sorry for the shadows, down into the right of the throttle um, tube. And on a later bus, whoop, I don't know, oh, we're darker. Uh, this is what it looks like on a later bus. It goes in that big hole there. So just for reference, if you're doing this on a late versus an earlier bus, there is a difference. So we are um, threading this rod through um, and it goes on the front cross member here. You got to push that up and then it's going to, we're going to push it forward. And the way that it routes, um, as you can see, it goes on the right or on the outside of these two over this guy and then to the frame right there. And I'm just going to show this routing coming back coming back right there and all the way so let's do it success all right so this is the rear of the tube we're going to bend that back in just a touch so it's vertical like perfectly vertical uh, but this angle looking great coming here through the middle you can see this guy was punched up a little bit but it's all right didn't affect our routing too much or anything um, so we've got it coming through, coming through, coming through under those guys, and then coming right in through here. So we're going to do a little tack weld right there, and then coming over here, coming out, and we're going to do a little tack weld, oops, sorry, to hold it to the frame right there. And gosh, we're looking great. This is excellent. Um, then it goes up there and then our, our clutch cable tube is going in there. So, um, yeah, this is excellent. That was way easier, honestly, than I thought it would be um, to get this guy in and installed. Uh, all we're going to do is our tack welds and that is probably the hardest part of the whole job will be done. So we're going to get some lunch and we'll come back soon. <laughs> Quick note here, forgot to include these in the whole pile, but uh, we got new boots for the front and the rear of the shifter shaft here. Okay, we are back from lunch here, and this is a different bus just to show what we're going for with this front uh, shifter area. So a couple things to note here. So this guy, the other bus has the provision for it, but it is not folded in and welded. I'll show you in a second on the other bus, but uh, basically this is what it looks like where the shifter shaft comes in here and that grommet is in there and you shift forward and back. Whoa, that's getting a little too crazy there. Um, but basically there's a flap here that is flat on the other bus and it gets folded in to meet, I'm gonna zoom in a bit if I can, to meet this side. And then on this back side, it's just welded, whoa, where are we? Nope, not there, not there, there we go. It's just welded along there. So we're gonna do this exact same thing. Uh, fold these flush and flat, centered, weld it together right there. And then we are also, that'll be the shifter shaft. Then we're also going to 
weld nuts on the underside where these two guys are um, so that our shaft and our nuts oh geez will all go in easily okay we're now looking at the floor of el dorito um, but this actually reminds me we changed out the the gas pedal to one from a manual as well so you need the gas pedal too what is that <laughs> we need the gas pedal too because the one that's automatic has a bunch of stuff on the back um, so uh, new gas pedal new linkage new uh, pin in here straightened up ready to go so that's that but what this section is really about is right here so uh, if you look closely there's nothing on the back side here nothing on the back side under there so when we put our bolts through for the shifter uh, we're going to vacuum this up and clean it up but when we put our bolts through there's nothing for them to go into like we had on the other bus so what we're going to do is take two flanged nuts um, bolt them tight Oop, here we go bolt them tight and then weld them from the underside so they are permanently attached so we'll do those two guys first uh, that'll be pretty easy and then we'll move on to uh, that guy right there where the shaft goes in nuts first then shaft so we're here under the bus um, getting ready to uh, weld the clutch cable tube on and then weld the the nuts uh, up there for the shifter um, and if you want to know, you want to know how dedicated we are here at Modern Bay. It is 99 degrees uh, today, and I'm wearing an extremely thick <laughs> welding jacket. So my internal temperature is at least 115 degrees, but we got a, just a touch of welding to do. So we're gonna bust this out and uh, get it going. So here we go. Time for some slow. Absolutely, fudge and fudge. Ow. Dang. That's hot. Look at my gloves. Yeah. Gosh. Burn you so I get the burn cream out? Burn into my skin. Um, do I look like a tiny little baby? <laughs> no, no. Good. Of course not. Why would I suggest such things? But I don't need burn cream. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I look like a tiny little baby. <laughs> okay, I think, I think we're good with the super ugly one. Uh, are you still rolling? No. Oh, okay. yeah, I am. Putting that down. Still 99 degrees, still wearing this jacket, and uh, I think I'm gonna give myself an award for the world's okayest uh, upside down T Rex welder. Um, this is not easy being sandwiched in here. Ask me why we didn't jack the bus up, I don't know. <laughs> We're just getting that. I like welding like this, um, but man, what a challenge uh, to, to get these on. Um, they're gonna hold forever, but I'm not even gonna show them to you because they're ugly. <laughs> Just kidding, I'll show them to you in a minute. Um, but yeah, so two nuts welded on, um, our clutch cable tube welded on. <laughs> um, and uh, we're getting ready to fold this flap in and then weld that on and we'll be done with welding up here. So the adventure continues. So we're still under the bus here and um, what we're gonna do is this flap, which is like that from the factory, but from the factory it's folded in for the manual transmission buses and it's left right where it is for the automatics. We're gonna take that and we're gonna pry it in. So we're gonna heat it up right along here. So that's where it's gonna be the bend point. And we're gonna pry it in until it meets this side right there. Um, when it once it touches it, we're gonna clamp it together and then weld it. I'm using these two guys, just a couple of short pry bars, we're able to get it that far and get it to the fulcrum where it's really bending right where it should. Uh, now we just got to kind of finish the process, um, just making sure it's it's bending along that line so it meets perfectly flush over here and we don't have any weird problems with uh, shifting because of it. 
We're getting there though. All right, so we are now feeding the clutch cable into the tube. You can see our spot weld right there. Not the prettiest, but not the ugliest either. So you gotta route it on the, in the indent in the frame. Move your hand real quick. And you, it goes right around the brake booster where there's a sheath on the clutch cable is where it rides over the brake booster. I'll get a shot from the front there too. Um, but we're looking good. It's already coming out. Okay, this is where we're connected to the clutch pedal assembly goes in there and all Volkswagens, all bay window buses have the two captive nuts or two nuts behind the frame to bolt our assembly on for that so we're good there. And of course you got to feed it through the frame. I don't know if we can get this in this video. Yeah, maybe. You see where it kind of goes through the frame there and then it goes behind the booster. Just like the stock setup, there we have no idea. We're too zoomed in. Ah, there we go. Until it goes right in there. Okie dokie, so clutch pedal assembly. This was sandblasted, disassembled, sandblasted, powder coated, reassembled. Uh, but we got a new cable, obviously. New clip on there. Got it greased up just a tidge. Um, because it, it likes the grease and it goes, of course, whoop, I'm all sideways now. It goes in there goes through there and then on the other side I don't know if we'll be able to see this from here but where it goes in we got that boot and then we got the little sleeve right there going in the boot and then we got the sleeve on the brake booster right there and we just packed that line we packed that line full of grease um, so that it is as, slides as smoothly as possible and don't have any problems there so Lines full of grease, clutch cables in, we're getting ready to mount the pedal assembly and the pedal. And this part, oh gosh, <laughs> this part will be good to go. So there we go. Um, from the factory, even if it's an automatic bus, it has the hole here for our beautiful clutch pedal. It's been sandblasted, powder coated and everything. Uh, so Jess is just going to pop this out. Go for it, Jess. Okay, there's our plug. <laughs> What's the Volkswagen part number? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, all right, so that's that. And then, Jess, I'm gonna put the pedal oh. down that way. Okay. And uh, we're almost there. Okay, look at that. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Wilding out. All right, so we're getting ready to install the shifter shaft here. And this one's in beautiful shape. Uh, all these bushings are excellent. So I'm going to re-grease, uh, just clean this up, re-grease them, and put it back in service because these are going to last much longer than new ones, to be totally honest. The new ones are really chintzy. So I'm just going to hit some grease on it. We'll be good. This is on the back side. Um, so I got the boot right here. Going to grease that up. And then we're going to start putting the shift shaft in through. It goes over the teeth past the gums, over the lips past the gums. I don't know. It goes over that guy through here and up in there this is just a quick sample so this is the last bushing going in and we've got the other two it was a tight fit getting in there uh that first bushing for sure um but nothing's ever really been inside that tube before which is means it's just like factory on this uh fit so that's great uh jess can you give it a twist and push twist and push so slowly but surely getting that in there oh hold on lining it up as we go all right twist and push and look at that all three bushings are now in there, greased up, looking great, and uh, we're almost there. So we gotta go, keep going this way, we'll put our boot over the end. Um, we'll be coming out that side, and I'll actually slide down there. So, hey, we got our boot. So we're coming out this side. Hold on, Jess, my boot's caught a little bit. Okay, uh, keep coming. Keep coming. All right, so boot's a pretty tight fit. All right, that's good. So boot, oops, sorry, my camera action here is not awesome, but boot's a pretty tight fit on the shaft, but it gets there. And then we'll, we'll bring it to, ideally with two hands instead of one. We're good, Jess. Um, go, here, I'm gonna push you back a little bit. Okay, um, sorry. Not a professional uh, video here, but gets the idea done. So 
Um, we're gonna put our boots on both ends and we should be good. There's this end ending up right there. We're gonna install this grommet on the front of the shift shaft. This is a piece we folded in from right here uh, the other day and then welded it. Um, and yeah, so one, now this is all uh, tight and you know, we just did some quick uh, rust oleum on our welded spot just so it doesn't you know, rust at any point. Um, but you can see that, you can see our two nuts maybe that welded on the bottom side. Up there, they saw the bolts in them uh, from, for holding them in place. But we're gonna install the grommet. Grommet is installed, we're gonna grease it up and time for the front shifter shaft. All right, so this part's pretty straightforward. We got our front shift rod in uh, right there and then you can follow it back and then it connects to the long shift rod going all the way back. We're gonna get our little bolt in there and we'll be good. Again, this is the longer front shift rod. If you're too short, it can also pop out up here. So you want to make sure you're using the correct length uh, shift rod. Otherwise, you're going to have all kinds of problems. Okay, so we've got a bit of a problem here. Once I got this, this guy torqued down all the way, uh, we're still really loose. And that's because that guy isn't long enough to uh, really like press fit in there. So we're gonna find a longer bolt, but if you run into something like that, or if you run into a, a long shaft that is, sorry for the shaky video, uh, a little wallered out like that, you're gonna have to get a longer bolt or fill it in with some weld and then drill down into it a little bit. Uh, but do what you need to do so that you don't have that play like we're getting here. We solved our problem with an OG uh, bolt that has a tapered head on it right there. The OG one is longer and when we clean that up and put it in uh, We are locked together super tight So that's not going anywhere um, And then I'm gonna put some wire around that guy through the hole uh, As a keeper and we'll be good Okay, so we're Filling our front little hockey stick thing full of grease. That's good. All right, get that grease out and then just get the grease all worked around in here. I put some in the front, put some, oh, sorry, poor video quality here. But I, yeah, so fill that guy full of grease. And then next up, Jeff, we need to grease this ball. So can you just get grease all over that guy? Yeah. Here, I'll pull it. There we go. Grease me. Uh, yeah, just get a bunch out and I'll get it all over there. Can never have too much grease. <laughs> uh, we need some down there too, toward the bottom part. Um, I'll get that with my finger actually. I'm gonna stop recording. <laughs> okay, so here uh, we're getting ready to install this guy. You can see nice and greased up, ready to rock. Um, and this aligns, of course, toward the front. We've got our um, plate with the ski jump there. So we are going to put this in and make sure we install it yep there we go we're locked in so i'm going to hold it down we'll adjust the shifter later i'll hold it down while i put while i stab a couple screws and our newly welded on nuts on the bottom side so we got that one we got this one and we are greased up okay so we'll tighten those down in a bit but that is how we're looking up here. All right, this is feeling awesome. I mean, it feels really tight, even though it's not hooked up to a transmission yet. Everything just feels nice and snug, almost like a new new setup because it is basically, well, a renewed setup. So, um, man, that feels great. All right, next step is gonna be hooking up the transmission. So here's the coupling, a shifter coupling. Uh, whenever we can, we use the, the original Volkswagen ones um, but we renew them, we restore them essentially, and I put a Vita weld along this. Uh, but the original Volkswagen ones are way higher quality than the chintzy aftermarket, honestly, pieces of junk. Um, and I'll show you a little comparison. So you can see that metal is so much thinner on the new ones that they make. They don't even stand on their own, honestly. <laughs> they're just, they're chintzy, they're not even the correct shape. Uh, they're kind of out of shape. Um, these things are terrible. I don't like them. So uh, whenever I get the OG VW ones, I use these and then put the new bushings 
and uh, be problem free for a long time to come. All right, all right. So, man, it's been a whirlwind uh, the last few days, but we have just been busting and busting and busting, uh, busting on this bus um, on El Dorito, and we just adjusted the throttle cable. That was the last thing to do before taking the bus out and, and bleeding the coolant and taking it for a spin. So here we go. All right, this is the maiden voyage in El Dorito and I am here for it. <laughs> and so is Jess, he's gonna be sitting in the passenger seat. Uh, man, we are just idling perfectly. Temps look great. Um, everything sounds good, looks good. And uh, we're excited to see uh, how it's rolling. How are you feeling, Jess? Oh, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, let's do it. We're rolling. We're in reverse. I'm not in reverse. We're gonna find some gears here. Maybe. Might be first. It's first. Oh. We got first. <laughs> Manual transmission yeah, conversion. We got first gear. There we go. That's a big step. <laughs> <laughs> All right, turning right. Those blinkers working like a charm now. Even with the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> Second, nice and tight with those new synchros. Oh boy! Yeah, all right. Yes, dude. We're yeah, so we're driving, dude. It's rolling. <laughs> all right, so here is the bus we're converting. There is the hole with nothing in it right now, which throws off our clutch cable adjustment. Um, so we're gonna throw our snazzy little bumper in there real quick and we'll be good to go all right here is that rubber block that goes into the clutch pedal you can see where it rides on it and it just goes into the floor part number 211 721 three, 384 i think right, so from under the bus there's that little bumper right there this is a clutch pedal so when the pedal comes down you know, like normal, when it comes up, it stops right there. So we still got to get it in through the top, but we're almost there. Just showing you kind of where that bumper goes. So that is done. We got our clutch pedal. We're going to adjust this to five eighths to three quarters of an inch with a one finger push. And that's measured, you know, from the floor, from your mat. Um, it's just the throw before it really gives you resistance. And uh, we've got our little block perfectly installed right there. And I don't think we'll be able to see it underneath without light. Yeah, you can see it. So just rest right there, just like it did from the factory on this factory automatic bus, which is now a gorgeous manual bus. Quick video here just on shifters and shift plates. Uh, when we welded on our nuts uh, on the bus, uh, the nuts, I think, were not totally centered. They were off a little bit, uh, especially the front ones off a little bit. So that threw our plate off a little bit, so we couldn't do reverse lockout. So there's a few things you can do if you can't find reverse lockout and you've done all the adjustments you can do, which we have. In our case, what we're going to try, so we uh, made these holes a little bit bigger. And by making these holes bigger to this side, to the right side here, uh, we're able to move our... Um, our plate over this way a little bit, just enough so that we can get lockout. That's the theory anyway. Um, so we're gonna put this up and see how it's looking, how it's working. Okay, so we're underneath the bus looking at the bottom of the shifter um, where the, our front shifter shaft comes in. We've got our new bushing. We've got this all welded up and together. And just to show you guys what's going on here. So we could not get reverse, or we could get reverse too easily really. Um, because our reverse lockout was not working. So um, Jess just put the put it against the plate. So you can see, hold on, yeah. So you can see there our reverse lockout. Now it's working. Uh, it's just riding against the plate. Now push down, Jess. Now it's clearancing it. Um, push down and just hold it there and go in reverse. So now he's in reverse and we are good. And it pops out now, yep. So he was able to get reverse and uh, let's see the other gears, just for good measure. Well, four, four, three, two, and one's a little tough because our synchros are still wearing in, but there's one. All right, so all around, we're looking good. We're feeling good. 
and uh, yeah, there we go. Might do a minor adjustment on reverse still, but I think on the whole we're looking real good. What do you think, Jess? Um, good on second now. All right.